Welcome back to Skyway TJ, guys, and happy 2020. Uh, I'm really excited to get back into the swing of things here. Thank you for the uh, little break I just had. And uh, welcome to the first ever episode of What's Poppin'. Uh, this is basically like a news roundup show where I'm going to be talking about all the big things coming uh, in the movie industry, the TV industry, video game industry. So, yeah, if you like this type of content, guys, please drop that like and subscribe for more. Uh, basically, each week or around there, I'm going to try to, like, talk about most of the things that have come out about Hollywood, about the video games coming up soon, stuff like that. Uh, so, yeah, we're just going to hop into this and we're going to do a little roundup of all the things that I've read and bookmarked from this week. So this first story comes from uh, Comic Book Resources on Twitter. Um, we're getting the first look at the Batman movie uh, coming from Matt Reeves starring Robert Pattinson. Uh, we got some first uh, look at the set photos. They're going to be on screen coming up. Nothing too major here. Uh, we're not seeing anything, anyone in the bat suit yet. But we are getting some uh, pictures of vans and everything that say like Gotham on them. So Gotham City Police and gotham water and power so it's cool to start seeing some of these like set choices um i believe there was an, another article that came out showing uh colin farrell as the batman i believe let me let me double check here um or colin farrell as the penguin sorry that's what i meant uh let's see it says the Batman set photos may reveal first glimpse of Colin Farrell's penguin. Let me see if I could find the picture they put up. Let's see. Oh, shut up. Hate ads. So let's see. Um, from these grainy photos, you might be able to see Colin Farrell as the penguin here. Yeah, so there's one. Could be it. It might just be Colin Farrell holding an umbrella. I don't know. It's probably him as the Penguin, but there you go. That might be the first look at the villain in The Batman. I am very interested to see what they're doing with this movie. I am sad that Ben Affleck is no longer the, the character of Batman, but, you know, we'll see what happens with this. It's a reboot, so hopefully DC can get on track with this, and Robert Pattinson is in it for the long haul. Hopefully he does well. I haven't seen much of him since Twilight. I think I watched him in Water for Elephants. I don't know. We'll see what he does. I heard he's pretty good. So I'm interested to see what he does with the Batman character. So this week the trailer for um, The New Mutants came out. And I have watched it. And I'm very intrigued by it. I've never been the hugest X-Men fan. I didn't like what Fox did with the characters. But I'm trying to get familiarated with them now that Disney owns them and they'll probably be incorporated into the MCU at some point but uh, this article comes from comicbook.com um, it says the new mutants is an original horror thriller set in an isolated hospital where a group of young mutants is being held for psychiatric monitoring when strange occurrences begin to take place both their new mutant abilities and their friendships will be tested as they battle to try and make it out alive so I love horror movies and I love superheroes so I'm going to watch this. I'm going to put it on my uh, anticipated list retroactively. Um, the problem is, like, it's not like the X-Men universe is done from Fox because, you know, Disney acquired Fox. Um, Dark Phoenix was supposed to be the end of the X-Men line, so I don't really know where this movie takes place. There was a rumor going around that this was going to be part of the MCU because it was a misprint in... Uh, a fan club magazine um, in the original newsletter Disney seemed to make it clear that the new mutants was clearly an MCU movie because they said there's a seriously electrifying new addition to the Marvel Cinematic Universe and it comes in the form of the latest from 20th Century Fox and Marvel Entertainment that was a misprint because it's been removed from the article and it's been re it's been uh, redacted so I don't really know what's going on this isn't an MCU movie it's not in the the Fox's universe, so this movie's just kind of, I do think it's just here, I think it's just like a, they had it all filmed and they just wanted to get it out of the way to see if it would make any money. I'm gonna watch it, but I'm very, I'm very confused as to what the hell's going on, you know? But it looks good, so it has some good uh, horror characters in it, the older brother from Stranger Things is in there, and 
I always forget her name, but the girl from Split, she's in there. So this this will probably be good. Hopefully the the, the mutants need a new something to make things better. <laughs> so I thought this was a fun, cute little story. Um, apparently in The Mandalorian, um, Baby Yoda has a name that's yet to be confirmed. So this comes from comicbook.com. Uh, Taika Waititi confirms that Baby Yoda has a real name on Star Wars The Mandalorian. Uh, Taika was the director for one of the episodes. Um, <laughs> I just thought this was kind of cute and funny because everyone loves Baby Yoda. And I think some of the directors are sick of him being called Baby Yoda because he's not actually Yoda. He just looks like him. But uh, from uh, Kyle Buchanan on Twitter, he said, I also asked Taika about Baby Yoda since he directed the Mandalorian finale. And <laughs> Taika said, he's not named Baby Yoda. There's a name yet to be revealed. And... He won't hint at it. He said, I'll wait for Favreau to give that away. So I think that's funny. Uh, Mandalorian is obviously hugely popular. It's taken the world by storm. I've yet to watch it. I'm sorry. I'm going to check it out soon. And I'll probably, I might review it because I love Star Wars. But um, yeah, I just think that's that's pretty funny. I think even Taika, <laughs> Taika might have responded to what <laughs> he thinks Baby Yoda's name is. He was obviously joking, but... I'm gonna look it up on Twitter right now because I think he said something hilarious. Hold on. Um, let's see. Where was it? Uh, yeah. <laughs> he quoted somebody's uh, review of what I just talked about. <laughs> and he said he thinks Baby Yoda's name is Nigel. If <laughs> That would be hilarious if like he went from Baby Yoda to Nigel. But obviously that's a joke. But yeah. So uh, hopefully in season two we'll find out what Baby Yoda's real name is. Our next story also comes from comicbook.com. Um, Joaquin Phoenix won a Golden Globe for, excuse me, he won a Golden Globe for Best Actor. Uh, I think it's well-deserved. His character of uh, Arthur Fleck, aka the Joker from, you know, Joker, was one of my favorite performances of the year. Um, it says, Joker star Joaquin Phoenix has been named Best Actor at the 77th Golden Globe Awards, giving the sixth time nominee his second Golden Globe following a 2006 win. 2006 win for his performance as Johnny Cash and Walk the Line. Um, I really loved what Joaquin did with the character. I really loved liked the Joker, and it was a nice, nice newish type of movie for DC. And I hope they go down this direction of like a dark universe for like horror or not horror for villains in their universe. So I hope they do something like that. Um, so yeah, that's a. Uh, Good for Joaquin. I bet he's nominated for an Oscar coming up here soon. I'm going to be talking about the Oscars at the end. I haven't looked at the nominees yet, but that'll be the end of this video. So our next story has me very excited. Um, this comes from uh, comicbook.com again. It says, Marvel Studios is reportedly developing new projects with Daredevil and the Defenders. So after Disney Plus was uh, announced and everything, it was they canceled all the shows on Netflix, Daredevil, Iron Fist, Luke Cage, Jessica Jones, the Defenders, um, the Punisher, they have canceled all of those. So I was very sad about that because I thought those were great shows, you know, minus Iron Fist, <laughs> but, um, this is good. So if Marvel studios is reportedly new projects with Daredevil and the defenders, we could get new movies from them, maybe new TV shows. Let me uh, go down in the article and see what it says. Um, so the first line, Marvel fans all over were upset when all the companies, defender shows on Netflix bit the dust. Now a report from the MCU Cosmic is speculating that there might be hope for Daredevil and the Defenders characters. The original agreement between the two companies basically locked the characters into limbo for a couple of years, but now that could have been settled and that means even more projects for the studio to pursue when it comes to streaming otherwise. Um, when Kevin Feige assumed a seat at the head of the head of most of the company's output, it felt inevitable that the other TV shows were basically cooked. It feels like the path forward will be likely involved Disney+. Plus. So like if they reboot those series on Disney+, Plus, I, I will be a I would be completely fine with that. Um, I hope they re I hope they keep the same actors because, man, they gave great performances. Uh, even Finn Jones as Iron Fist, he gets a lot of flack, but if they just tweak that show a bit, I feel like he would do a great job at it. Um, let's see what else it says. A report from The Hollywood Reporter gave the official answer as to why the Marvel Netflix universe fell apart. It turns out the money was a huge motivating factor. After a misfire and a couple projects that might not have achieved what the company wanted, it was time for a change. The shakeup is off to a good start as it looks like Disney will be calling for even more content for Disney+. Plus. Uh, here's what they included as part of its breakdown of the Punisher and Jessica Jones cancellations. Um, let's see. 
just talks about how uh, Netflix didn't have an ownership in any of the Davis Marvel TV series. They were all owned by Disney. Uh, money, money, money. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, it basically just goes on to keep reinforcing what we said. The path forward is going to look different with uh, everything on Disney+. Plus. So nothing's been 100% confirmed yet, but this is just pure speculation. But I really hope they bring back those shows. They were really good. Marvel already has a fuck ton of shows coming out this year on Disney+, Plus, so I don't know where they're going to fit those in, but, you know, Marvel's taking over the world, and I'm okay with that because I'm a huge nerd, so I don't know. We'll see. I hope we see uh, Daredevil and Jessica Jones and Luke Cage and all them back soon, so, yeah. So this next story comes from the Discussing Film uh, Twitter page, which is a great great account if you want to learn about uh what's all going on in the film industry but uh we have ryan johnson has confirmed that a knives out sequel is in development and plans to make it in the next year uh johnson adds that daniel craig will reprise his role and that daniel had so much fun doing the first film and he wants to do more so this is great uh apparently they want to put daniel craig's character from knives out in a bunch of like murder mysteries like this and have him deal with new families each time and new whodunits love this idea knives out was one of the best movies of last year I fucking loved it so much, and I'm glad to see that they're planning on making more, and I'm glad they're trying to do a new cast. I don't know if it'll be as successful as this one, because the cast was a huge part of Knives Out, but I'm very interested to see what Ryan Johnson does next, and Daniel Craig, you know, was very funny, very, very good performance in that movie, so I'm really hoping uh, the Knives Out sequel is as good as the first one. So, something very exciting that just happened, um, the Morbius trailer came out. Uh, this is a movie focused on the character from the comics. He's in, like, the Spider-Man universe. Um, so this is coming out from Sony uh, in their uh, partnership with Marvel. And this is in their Spidey universe. And this one has... This one has me hyped. Like, it looks pretty damn good. And, like, I've had I've had high, low expectations for Jared Leto in the past couple years. Ever since I saw him as Joker in the Suicide Squad. But he looks really good in this role. This movie looks creepy as shit. And I really dig it. The weird thing is, though, there are, like, weird references to Spider-Man. Like, there's been there's been rumors that Tom Holland is going to appear in this, but I'll put a screen cap on the screen. There's a, there's a picture of Spider-Man on a wall, but somebody's written murderer over it. So I don't know if that's, like, uh, a dig at, or, like, a reference to Far From Home, because everyone thinks Peter Parker's a murderer in that one, because uh, Mysterio led the media to believe that he was innocent and was killed by Spider-Man, or if this is something else completely. So, interested to see what they're doing with that. And at the very end of this trailer, Michael Keaton shows up, and he looks like just like the character from uh, Homecoming. He looks like the Vulture. Is worse than the disease. Michael Morbius. Got tired of doing the whole good guy thing, huh? What's up, Doc? So, I don't know if this is, like, they're mashing these two universes together with, like, just Spider-Man, obviously. But, like, is he the vulture in this? Like, what's going on? So, like, I'm very interested to see what they're doing with this. Very excited to see this movie now. Very, very, very excited. So, let's talk about the Oscars now. Um, these all came out today. We're going to talk about what... You know, everything's been nominated for, and I'll give you my quick little opinion on it. The Oscars are all led by a bunch of old white dudes, so, like, most of the time, they just pick a bunch of crap movies. Sometimes they pick some bangers, but most of the time, it's nothing that great. Um, I'll just throw this in real quick. Um, there's been no women directors um, nominated, which is horrific. You know, come on. And there's only <clears throat> there's only been, like, one woman of color you know, nominated, and it was because she was in Harriet, like, come on, there were so many good performances this year, like, quit snubbing all these people for all these white people, like, I'm not trying to be, like, a social justice warrior here, but, like, come on, these people deserve credit for what they do, like, they were in some great movies, like, come on. All right, so the nominees for Best Picture at the uh, 92nd Academy Awards, the Oscars, um, by the way, I'm getting all this from Discussing Film, follow them on Twitter, great, great, great account. 
So the best picture nominees are Ford vs. Ferrari, The Irishman, Jojo Rabbit, Joker, Little Women, Marriage Story, 1917, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and Parasite. So I could see a lot of these winning. Um, Joker won a Golden Globe for uh, um, Joaquin Phoenix. 1917 is a really good war movie from what I've heard. It's like has great like action pieces and uh, great cinematography. So I could see that. Maybe Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. That was apparently a pretty good one. I really don't know which way the Academy is going to go with this one. But, you know, it's always something. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think is going to win Best Picture. For uh, Best Directing, we have... Martin Scorsese for The Irishman, Todd Phillips for Joker, Sam Mendes for 1917, Once Upon a or Quentin Tarantino for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and Bong Joon Ho for Parasite. Hope I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, yeah, um, I could. Again, I have no idea which way the Academy is going to go. They're all, you know, they're all good movies in their own right, I'm sure. But I don't know. I guess we'll just have to see. So the nominees for Best Leading Actress, we have uh, Cynthia Erivo for her performance in Harriet, Scarlett Johansson for her performance in Marriage Story, Saoirse Ronan for Little Women, Charlize Theron for Bombshell, and Renee Zellweger for Judy. I don't know which way the uh, they're going to go for that one, but I guess we'll see. So the nominees for Best Leading Actor, we have Antonio Banderas for Pain and Glory, Leonardo DiCaprio for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Adam Driver for Mar Marriage Story, Joaquin Phoenix for Joker, and Jonathan Price for The Two Popes. I could see them either going with Joaquin or Leo. I don't know. Those would just seem like the two leading ones that I could see them giving it to, but the Academy always just throws random bullshit. So I guess we'll see. So the nominees for Best Original Screenplay, we have Knives Out by Ryan Johnson, Marriage Story written by Noah ba Baumbach, uh, 1917, written by Sam Mendes and Christy Wilson Cairns. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, written by Quentin Tarantino. And Parasite, with the screenplay by Bong Joon-ho and Han Jin Won. And the story by Bong Joon-ho. So, I personally want this to go to Knives Out. I think it's super good, super, super interesting. But I guess we'll have to see what they go for. For uh, the nominees for Best Adapted Screenplay, we have The Irishman, by screenplay by Steven Zalane. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, Jojo Rabbit, screenplay by Taika Watiti, Joker, written by Todd Phillips and Scott and Silver. Little Women, written for the screen by Greta Gerwig. And The Two Popes, written by Anthony McCartan. Again, that could go either way. Good films there. So I don't... Next, we have the nominees for Best Original Song. Uh, we have Can't Let You Throw Yourself Away from Toy Story 4. I'm Gonna Love Me Again from Rocket Man. I'm Standing With You from Breakthrough. Into the Unknown from Frozen 2 and Stand Up from Harriet. Personally, I would like that to go to Into the Unknown. I just love that song and I love that movie, but we will see. For Best Animated Feature, the nominees are How to Train Your Dragon, The Hidden World, I Lost My Body, Claws, Missing Link, and Toy Story 4. Toy Story 4 does not deserve that, so it better not get it. Um, I'm surprised Frozen isn't on here. That is a huge misstep. Um, I don't know. I, I guarantee they give that to Missing Link, even though the movie sucks. But I guess we'll see. Best makeup and hairstyling. We have Bombshell, Joker, Judy, Maleficent, Mistress of Evil, and 1917. Don't know which way they're going to go for that one. Should go to Joker, in my opinion, or Maleficent, but we'll see. Uh, nominees for Best Visual Effects. We have Avengers Endgame, The Irishman, Lion King, 1917, and Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. This one's a toss-up. Endgame deserves that. Lion King deserves that. 1917 deserves that. Rise of Skywalker deserves that. They're all beautiful films. I guess we'll just have to see what the Academy wants to do. Best Cinematography, we have The Irishman, Joker, The Lighthouse, 1917, and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Personally, I think that should go to 1917. Um, I've, I've been <clears throat> watching, as I'm waiting for the theater's den, I've been watching the the uh, camera work and it's like very beautiful long shots and everything i think it should go to 1917 but i'm not in the academy so <laughs> uh the nominees for best film editing we have ford versus ferrari the irishman jojo rabbit joker and parasite 
Don't know which way they're going to go for that. Production design. The Irishman, Jojo Rabbit, 1917, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and Parasite. Don't know. Best International Best International Feature Film. Corpus Christi, Honeyland, Les Miserables, Les Mis, Pain and Glory, and Parasite. Haven't seen any of those. Can't give any opinion. Best Documentary, Short Subject, In the Absence, Learning to Skateboard in a War Zone, If You're a Girl, Life Overtakes Me, St. Louis, Superman, and Walk, Run, Cha-Cha. Again, I've never seen any of those, but if you're interested, there you go. Uh, the Best Documentary Picture, American Factory, The Cave, The Edge of Democracy, For Sama, and Honeyland. Never seen any of them, so... But it's there if you want to know. For Best Supporting Actor, the nominees are Tom Hanks in A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood, Anthony Hopkins in The Two Popes, Al Pacino in The Irishman, Joe Pesci in The Irishman, and Brad Pitt from Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I would give that one personally to Tom Hanks or Brad Pitt, but the Academy will do what they want to do. Uh, nominees for Best Live Action Short Film, we have Brotherhood, Nefta Football Club, The Neighbor's Widow, Saria, and A Sister. Never seen any of those. Can't give any opinion. Uh, nominees for Best Animated Short Film. We got Daughter or Decatara. Hair Love, Kit Bowl, Memorable and Sister. Never saw them. Best Original Score. We got Joker, Little Women, Marriage Story, 1917, Rise of Skywalker. Personally, we give that to Star Wars. John Williams is a... He's just great in all aspects, so you should give it to him, but who knows. For best sound mixing, we have Ad Astra, Ford vs. Ferrari, Joker, 1917, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I have no idea which one they're going to go for that. Best sound editing, Ford vs. Ferrari, Joker, 1917, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. And Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. Best costume design, we have The Irishman, Jojo Rabbit, Joker, Little Women, and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Could go either way. Uh... Nominees for Best Supporting Actress, we got Kathy Bates and Richard Jewell, Laura Dern from Marriage Story, Scarlett Johansson and Jojo Rabbit, Florence Pugh and Little Women, and Margot Robbie and Bombshell. I would give that one to Kathy Bates. I hope she gets it. I love Kathy Bates. And that's all the Oscar news I have for you guys today. Uh, I hope that long spiel was, you know, interesting to you. The Oscars are always a weird a weird thing like yes it's great to recognize films like this but the, the academy always snubs really great films and i know they can't include them all but like there have been some great films this year that i feel like they're missing out on and giving praise to but you know uh when i know who wins what i'll give my opinions here on the channel don't you worry so yeah that's been the oscar coverage guys and finally i just want to tell you about the movies coming out this weekend that uh you might want to see, you might not want to see, I don't know. Uh, Doolittle comes out this weekend. That's the one starring Robert Downey Jr. Dr. Doolittle is a guy who can talk to animals. He goes on an adventure, I believe, with two kids. I haven't watched the trailer in a minute, so I don't remember. But yeah, I'm definitely going to be checking that one out. There will be a review on it. We got The Last Full Measure coming out. That's a uh, real-life story about the Vietnam War and two heroes that were in it. I think they saved like 60 men or something. So... Uh, uh, war movie buffs will probably go out and see that until you, someone can tell me how that is because I don't think my theater is going to get it and I don't have that much of an interest in it. And we also got Bad Boys for Life. <clears throat> I haven't watched any of the other ones so I don't really know anything about this one but I know a lot of people who are hyped for this movie. So let me know if you see it. Uh, tell me how it is and maybe I'll go check it out. But that's been the uh, movies coming out this year. or <laughs> That's been the movies for uh, that are coming out this weekend. And yeah. Well, guys, that's been the first episode of What's Poppin'. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, I really would like your opinion on this new series. If you guys like it, I'll do more of it. Um, I will do a couple more episodes regardless of what, you know, everything says. But I just want to... If you guys really like this, please like the video. I'm very interested to see if this new type of content is something you guys like. Uh, I'll have movie reviews coming up soon once I see some movies in 2020. I haven't seen one yet. Uh, we got ranked videos coming out soon. All that jazz. So... Please like the video, guys. Subscribe for more. I'll be back soon with a new video. Please be kind to one another, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.